what we all about. Yes, guys, episode 12. Today we're going to go all the way back to when I was 16, when I came into the game, exactly where I started my apprenticeship, which is in Leeds, my hometown, my home city. The first job, we're only around the corner from here where this big, massive Leeds United mural is behind me. I'm going to show you the first brick I ever laid, and then we're going to go in chronological order to where we are today. We're going to see how we got here, we're going to see some challenges, we're going to see all the little bits in between. Let's go! Leeds, 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 Leeds. So picture this little 16 year old James goes to the cabin over there to meet the site manager on my very first day I got these free pair of shitty acro bright black warehouse looking boots a brand spanking new extra large ivies and a stupid big white hat that nearly covered all my face like this and off I trotted and on my very first day I actually walled this exact brick it was either that one or that one I know it went right in the middle and it was about my waist height saying that when I was 16 my waist height might have been about here but it was either that brick or that brick. Special moment and it's meant to be back here having a look what eight years later. Is it eight, four, five, six, seven? Oh, seven, seven years later. On this job I met Lee and Tomo. I bumped into Lee and Tomo down the bottom when I was unloading a kitchen and basically cut a long story short, Lee phoned up my main boss at Keepmoat and says why have we got an apprentice bricklayer unloading kitchens? Can I take him? The boss says yeah if you want. You might as well, you work for Keepmoat, don't you? So Lee says, yeah, I do. Can you come with us? We'll show him the ropes. So off I went with Lee and Tomo, and we went down to the Holbeck job, which is about a mile away from this, another phase of this regeneration project that we're going on in Holbeck back in 2014. We're gonna go head there now and show you exactly what I did with Lee and Tomo. Guys, ITS are still running their biggest ever Black Friday sale every Friday. This is the last chance to get involved. The last Friday in November, you got a chance to win all kinds of great deals if you go onto the website. When you do get to the checkout, if you've spent more than 60 quid, enter the code JDN Brickwork and you'll be granted with a free goodie bundle worth 30 quid. You get a hard hat with a bottle opener, you'll get a pen light, you'll get a mug, you'll get a tape measure and you'll also get a man card with all kinds of different little gadgets on it. Make sure you get involved, this is the last chance and it's the biggest sale ever. Right, let's move on to November 2014. I got fetched down here by Liam Tomo to do the footings on these pair, this pair and that pair right there. We did the footings in November, freezing cold, the first taste of a bit of winter work for myself. I actually, one morning, I remember turning up for work, there were an empty gobbo tub on that plot over there. I'd loaded out all the dumpies, everything for all the footing, finished it, boxed it all off before they even turned up. And I've sat myself on this empty gobbo tub that were flipped upside down, and my head was just nodding like a nodding dog. And I actually fell asleep and I woke up to the sound of a brick hitting the back of the tub and I jumped up like a madman. <laughs> I vividly remember that, it was freezing cold as well and I was like, you bastards, is this what it's about then? It's not even seven o'clock. Uh, so yeah, that was that. And then we obviously stayed on these plots. Took one up to the first lift, scaffold got run round, jumped on the next one, next one the scaffold got run round and Lee and Tomo were fast, they were quick man. So the scaffolders were like in, as soon as we were done, then we were in, the scaffolders were back in and up, up, up we went. They weren't the neatest but they were very quick. They knew what they could get away with, they got the job done and they taught me some valuable lessons in terms of mindset, in terms of pushing forward and just, they were just hardcore bricklayers, they were only young, they were like 30, 35, but they were bang, 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 hell for leather constantly and they taught me a, a lot of lessons. So very thankful to them guys. So then obviously time went on throughout my apprenticeship. Turned 17 in the following March. Went on and on and on, all on this job. This job, there's like 400 houses on this job. So I was like jumping about from gang to gang to gang, from plot to plot to plot, doing all different types of houses. There's, there's apartment blocks on here, there's houses on here, there's heads, there's sills, there's all sorts. So I saw my apprenticeship out on this job and the Folly Lane job that you've just seen, which is another phase. And then it got to like the end of my apprenticeship and I was, I was still 17 at the time. Um, I'd passed my driving test and I, I bumped into Lee again because it's like so big you kind of like I don't know how many bricklayers were on here but there were a lot so you rarely saw each other if you didn't if you weren't working physically with them on the same plot so I bumped into Lee outside the gate he says right you need to get your UTR you need to become self-employed and you need to get some wheels because you can't be a brickie we are some wheels were his exact words Lee said that I could go along with him we would just be a pair of brickies partnership we built houses we built garden walls mainly house bashing obviously and they were all 
like sites I go past like quite regularly and it's it's awesome to look at and just think you know I did that and I, to say that I was fairly young 16 17 18 doing some pretty cool stuff and that leads us into where we're going now my mum's next door neighbour Carl when I was back home with my dad's obviously and he was like I've got a garden wall in the front here as you can see obviously and it needs it could do it really taking down with you do you want to give me a price for what you'd do it for? So I, I gave him the price. Like we got, he got the materials, and all I told him were like my week's wage, what I'd have, what I'd have got at work, I which was like 150 quid. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'll take it down and rebuild it for you. We'll call it 150 quid. And he was like, obviously he couldn't speak, and I was pretty gassed because he just snapped my hand straight off. So I was like, yes, boom, first cover job. So uh, here we go. You're gonna see it, and you're gonna see what it led into as well. Fucking lovely this man. She's alright, on, Shut up. Help! Help! <laughs> She's running up the street. Hey! Go on, get in. You got a little film. <laughs> get in! <laughs> Let me know if you want to drink. I will do. Help me, old man. And this is my mum and dad's next door neighbour, Carl, who gave me the privilege of building his front garden wall when I was 17 years old. Carl put his trust in me, he got it cheap as chips, and I think I did a pretty good job. And this is what kicked off the small covey jobs that have led to the bigger jobs that we're doing today. So, as you can see, nice little red brick, uh, some little one brick thick pillars. I even suggested a little diamond feature. I should have projected it really, but it's just a different colour brick. Um, but I put one of them in each of the panels. Did all the pillars first and then did like one panel at a time. Measured very, very carefully where the um, different coloured diamonds were going to go. Then topped it off with some flags that I had to cut in half. And yeah, first gully job. I hadn't actually looked at these in as much. <gasps> what? Couple of pinholes that I've missed. So what are they? What are oh, yeah, so they're where my, my line and pin's been bashed into the wall to run it in when I've built my corners and I forgot to point my pinholes in. Oh <gasps> bad gym. To say that's the only mistake that I can see anyway. I think that's pretty good. You know what? Oh well proud of myself. I remember building this and being absolutely gassed. And then so this guy who lives about eight doors up where we're gonna head to now, he was just walking up the path right there. And he, he says to me he's, he's obviously seen me playing out on the street and such when I was younger, like a kid growing up and that kept talking to him, say hello and that and he's gone, eh, hey what bricky? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I didn't know that. I've been looking for a bricklayer for the past year and a half. He says, come and see me when you finish today. I've got a job for you. So up I trotted to see him. And then I produced, I produced this a, couple, a few weeks later. I was 18 by this point and I was gutted because I really wanted to build this while I was still 17 to be able to say, I built that when I was 17, but I was I 18. Um, but it is what it is. I think it was still a cool little job for me to put onto my little portfolio that got me going. Solid wall that mate, it's like a fort. It is. Solid that. Anyway, that's the wall that I did when I was 18. We're now going to move on to um, what happened next. Come on. So we were on a job for persimmon in Kippux. And I says, look Lee, I've got a mate who wants to get into the trade. He's ready to start working. He wants to come and be a labourer on me. I think I'm going to go with him on myself, mate. And Lee was like, you know what? I think you're ready to go and do it. So by this time I was 20. So this is in 2018, summertime. Um, and I've got to start with Mitchell and Irwin. Got a lot to thank Mitchell and Irwin for. Brilliant company. Any youngsters in the trade in and around Yorkshire. Um, Mitchell and Irwin are a very, very good brick lane company. I, I don't say about many because obviously I'd be stupid to not promote myself. But Mitchell and Irwin, there's not much competition for them boys. They had this job on in Holton Mall, which is uh, only a, a short trip away from my house up in Seacroft where I lived at the time with my mum and dad. Um, and I got on here with Reese. So Reese got his CSCS car, they helped him through all that. And we were just a one on one. And we were subcontracted to Mitchell and Irwin and we built that pair of semi detached houses there. Um, very, very, very proud of that build I was. That was the first plot that I built on my own with these two hands here. 20 years old, from start to finish, done. From damp course all the way up to the last brick at the top of the peak. Me and Reese, Reese labouring on me, me building. Um, we earned some good money. We built um, like the second lift on a couple of others, did another couple of cut ups. And then by that time, that was when I jumped ship and that was when JDN Brickwork was born. So I left Mitchell and Irwin 
and JDN Britwork got its first kind of contract, so to speak, like an unofficial contract, but it was our job um, up on a block of apartments that's up the road. Obviously that's like secure and secluded, so we can't just go in and film that, but we did all the internal block work on that, set out all the um, apartment rooms, the heights, the floor levels, and everything to do with Britwork on that job, we did. Um, so yeah, it were like a long, it was like an ongoing thing. So they were happy for us to follow. We were on dairy. We worked very hard on there. <laughs> From there, that was when I got the other jobs. That was when the people started seeing what we were about and asking me to come and quote things that were like massively out of my comfort zone. I got a phone call from a property developer and they wanted the full machines. Now, if we rewind back to episode one, I quoted it yesterday for him. Did you? We did an extension in Armour for them last year. Uh, full yeah. machines, block and render, uh, footings, roof, all joinery, all lot, and then landscaping afterwards as well. That were the groundworks, the block work, the render, the scaffolding, the roof, the joinery, the landscaping afterwards. Um, and that were a massive, massive stepping stone for us. And me documenting that on my social media just led us, led us to doing all this crazy shit. I've had mentors, property mentors, business mentors, clever people, and I've just been an absolute sponge and I've just picked things from everyone who's done a little bit from where I want to be. I've just picked little bits from their brain and um, tried to get all the good qualities, all the positive qualities together and bring them close to me so that I can use them to progress myself, my career and my voice forward. Now you've been keeping up with the rating and site that it's led to. Now you've been keeping up with the Castleford site that all this has led to. There's been so much stuff going on in between as well, but today you've had the outline of what actually happened, how JDN came about, right from when I were an apprentice, all the way to the renting and cast sites and everything in between. Where I started off on my own here with Reese, with my bare hands, building houses, with a mate of mine who was a, still a very good friend of mine. We've since parted ways work-wise, but we're still very close-knit. And now the team of people that I've got with me, I couldn't be more grateful for, you all know who you are. And we're just continuing to grow, we're still only just getting started. I still feel like a baby in the game, um, but we're, on, we're in here for the long haul and we're going to take you guys with us. So keep up with us, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting. I don't know why I'm closing out because we're going to go eat some food, but that's a little bit of a semi-outro for you there. So it's dropping dark, the day's almost done. I'm just on my way to Burstall to pick up my still saw after it's been repaired. And on my way to Burstall, I came through Armley. So while I was driving through Armley, I thought I'd stop by and show you this extension that we did start to finish. This is the one that we did the full mashings on last year in June 2020. Everything from the groundworks right to the finishing roof tile, to the guttering, to the downpipes, to the landscaping afterwards. We did all that and that was like, that was the first time I've done anything other than just the brickwork. There's also a little bit of stonework in there as well, some projected stone that the render works around and blends in really nicely to match the existing property. So everything was thought about by the architect when he designed this extension um, and we delivered it to the standard where the client was over the moon. So we had a very happy client, we got paid uh, the agreed sum, uh, the tenant was happy also because it's a tenanted property this, so the landlord was happy, the tenant was happy, I was happy, the boys were happy, it was a really good job all in all, really well organised, really well put together and um, if anybody does want anything like this on the side of their property anytime next year from summertime onwards, we're taking bookings now. So get in touch via the information in the description below. Lovely mate. A YouTube channel? Yeah, I've got YouTube, yeah. What, doing what? For how to repair a saw? No. <laughs> I wish there were a YouTube channel to be fair, so. Yeah. Hello. There you go, mate. You're this right. Is this, this is Steve, Mr. Stillsaw Fixer. <laughs> when you're cleaning it, yeah. obviously you don't want anything there. What you should no. really do is yeah. take your four bolts out. Yeah. 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 Take them out, and then you can see all the crap, knock all the dust out. Yeah. And then if you're going to clean it, clean it sort of like yeah. that way. Without it going in them all exhaust holes as well. Well, it won't go in the exhaust holes because them two, it's what all, them two are all the exhaust on. The bottom one, yeah. it can't possibly, water can't go in there and go up. Right, okay, cool. But from what about today, the side there, are we alright to clean that bit out as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the back of there is all your flywheel and that lot. So I've cleaned all that and took all these back way. That's the most important part. You see this piece here? Yes. If the dust, because everybody thinks your filters are there, yeah. but your actual dust comes from underneath here, goes all the way around the back, through this part here, yeah. which is part of the filter system. Right. And if that gets all clogged up, it goes from there in the filtration system and then goes in the carburetor. But when you clean it out, I know you kept it clean, yeah, yeah. but it's obviously when you clean it, it's it's sat it a different way. I won't go anywhere near that. If you're gonna clean it, yeah. when you're finished on a day, it's yeah. just, you know, just clean, clean round here and that lot. Yeah. I know it was quite 
cleanish, but that's, yeah, yeah. that's your first part. I remember part, last time, last time you told me keep it clean, do you remember? Yeah, so that's that your first clean. part, yeah. Yeah. Your second part is, this is when it's on my work bench, you can see James. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's definitely your. <laughs> your next one is this one. I've took your engine out, wow. and that's your uh, clutch part of, the, of it, yeah? Yep. So I've took the engine out of it because I want to see what's actually inside the actual... You know, want to see what's inside the combustion chamber, in, inside of the engine. Mm. So we've, we've took the barrel and piston off, which is this part here. So we go to this, and then what's happened? Oh dear. What's that? Oh, oh, looks shit. like looks like water. Yeah, and also, in, in, in the crankcase itself, water, yep. water, mm -hmm. water, water. You can't have that, because soon as you... I know, because when I took the spark plug out, I pulled it. I put a bit of uh, tissue over the top just to mm -hmm. pull it to see what's in the combustion chamber. So obviously, all this crap here, mm -hmm. as soon as you pull it, it comes out a spark plug and right. it's full. So I had to set the engine out, yeah? So yeah, we've got yeah. to this, yeah? yeah? So we go to the next part, which is this. As you can see in this combustion chamber, cool. now it's all clean, everything's clean, right to the, everything's clean. Good as new. Good as new. That is what's in the either engine, yeah? You probably don't know this. No idea, mate. So and, and, that's it. and then we'll just put it all back together, make sure everything's clean, check the rings in the bore, not a bit of, these are slight wear, you know, yeah. Yeah. but everything back. much, it's almost, well, I mean, it was new, it's well, no. about six months old enough. No, no, it's, it, uh, it's, a 20, uh, it's a 2020, that engine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I mean, when I bought it. Yeah, that's when you bought it, yeah. Shall we get it going? Well, we don't know if it'll work. <laughs> I've got faith in you, Steve. No. Steve. You show me how you start it, yeah? So, yeah, no. Bang. Well, yeah, that was. No saw who this. Bosh. Krispy Kreme, yeah? Tim Hortons, Tim Hooten, Donuts and Timbits. Oh, Alright. I've seen that Beard Meets Food, I've seen him get loaded of Timbits. Is this where he gets Timbits from? Beard Meets Food? Yeah, he's the boy, he's from round here. I'll throw up an estimated calorie count on screen, we'll get a time to go just for fun. And without further ado, this is Beard Meets Food and this is more Timbits than any human being should ever even think about eating. I'll get a crispy chicken sandwich just by itself, not a meal. Yeah, that's fine. Sick. Sick. I don't know what they're called. What are them things? They look like waffles, but they're like fries. <laughs> Lattice fries. Lattice fries, is that what they're called, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get some of them, please. Yeah. Who the fuck's Tim Martin? Canada's favourite coffee. I got myself some waffle looking fries. And Benny's got a chicken strip on his. It's pretty dry. It's alright if you ask me, lad. It's a bit dry there, bro. Show me a stupid <laughs> lattice fries. <laughs> <laughs> Don't disrespect a man's order like that, I'm sorry Ben. Waffle. Oh, I didn't see the Big Mac sauce. Tim Hortons. Tim, Hort Tim Hortons for a starter starter. Yeah. <laughs> the starter for the, the starter before the starter. Well, hors d'oeuvre. Mm -hmm. Strong eight. Yeah, probably back in it, it was nice. Strong eight. And the, them crinkle fries, yeah, 10. Straight 10. <whistles> Dipped in a bit of mayo. Maybe on the run, they might be a little bit too salty. 10's a pretty high score, you know. No, 10, them fries. <laughs> bang. <laughs> They're worth the 10. Them fries look like waffles. Say no more. Say nada. Are we off Krispy Kreme? Yeah, I'm gonna get a billionaire cheesecake, please. What about Black Forest? Um, I think it's like a cherry flavoured chocolate, isn't it? I think, I think that's got to be the one for me. Yeah, I'll see that. Black Forest and Billionaire Cheesecake. Black Forest about to go down. Brand new. <laughs> Brand new. Mm. Did you even get any of the filling then? A little bit. So Not loads. Just enough. Yeah, I can taste the cherry. Mm. Very cherry. -y. That filling tastes exactly like the a red quality street, the chocolate and the thing in one. Right. It's like it's you've just took took the wrapper off of the red quality street. Cut it in down. And ate it. Yeah. And yeah, literally just slotted it into a donut. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> I'm sure them red quality streets are strawberry flavour though. No. <laughs> no. Mate, I'm telling you. Back in episode four, Ben asked me what my final meal would be on this earth. What would be your final meal, death row meal? There's a local pizza shop to Castleford. It's an independent pizza shop. It's not like your Domino's or your pizza. Or. He does an absolutely banging tandoori chicken pizza. He does the sickest cheesy chips as well. He puts cheese on the bottom, like in the middle and on the top. Yeah. <sighs> Ben's last week of his bulk, he's been doing a 22 week bulk. Um, so he's got really big. Now he's ready to cut back down again. So today's his last meal before he starts his diet next week. So he's gonna share a pizza with me on what I would have as my last meal. Here we are, look. The boys. The boys. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna order big up OG. OG from Pizza Prima, he's gonna look after us tonight. And yeah, let's go and eat. If there's ever water freeze in this town, I'll take the money just like Ernest said, via free of charge. Thank you. And if you want a bag of as well, Dave, your tickets are there. So, maybe one more? Yeah, Alan, can I have a Balamea, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a bit. See you. Thank you. See you later. Have a nice night. You, you too. too. See you in a bit, mate. Leg out. <laughs> Pressure's on now, lad. Pressure's on. Better what deliver. For? Oh, what for you? I know, yeah. After I bigged up that kebab on you, were <laughs> fairly disappointed. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> it's not melted yet, it needs a little more time. Cheesy sarnie that. Isn't it? Cheese sarnie, and there's a little bit of cheese in it. Whoa! Oh, what mm -mm. <laughs> oh, you been listening to, you, lad? Frank Ocean and that, lad. <laughs> you wrong a bit, Frank. Yeah, Copyright. Um, but, uh, there it is, the boy. <laughs> Looks good, that, mate. Smells good. Woo! Come on, then, Ben. Let's tuck in. It's all falling off, man. Is it not red hot? It's all falling off, man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a bit hot, but bad boy. <laughs> it's really like soundproof this car, isn't it? Mm. That was like a sound wall. <laughs> I feel like I could hear a pin drop. I think it might be the change of scenery that's fucks in with my head. <laughs> Guys, drop us a like, drop us a comment, make sure you subscribe and make sure you bring a pal along. We'll see you next time. Sound that? Yeah? Yeah, I think that's sound. Alright, cool. Nice. Yeah, bro. I was a primo. Yeah, nice. Rated Did you enjoy it? it? Yeah, rated it. Nice. You excited for the cut? What's the cut? The cutting. You're cutting now, aren't you? You're gonna get a lean. Oh, the a, cut, I thought it meant of the edit. A lean, a lean, mean cameraman machine. Yeah, yeah, quite excited. What, what weight are you aiming for? I'm not really aiming for a weight. I just want to be fucking shredded, edit. shredded, 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 and edit. A fucking sh <laughs> shred bundy. Yeah, shred bundy. <laughs> oh fuck! Right, let's.